Okay, so it's time to talk a bit about copyright and look a bit at the history and try and define it a bit uh, with some kind of short definition. So are you ready? Always ready. Excellent. So it started with this baby. It's the printing press that Europeans tried to claim as a German invention from the 1400s, but actually it was made in China and I think also South Korea with some kind of uh, with all made of wood. I, I'm not sure about it. It's, it's, it's kind of an old invention. And with that, we could start printing books such as uh, this Bible. It's nice looking. And this is the Gutenberg Bible, which is, well, as you can read yourself, it's one of the major books printed. Um, so it's kind of good. But it also meant that more or less anyone could print. So we could mass produce materials such as books. And we could argue and discuss if this is good for everyone. So what are your opinions on this? I guess everyone is a, is a broad term because you you still need it to be an expert in creating the press or not. Or I guess you need to have uh, access to funds to be able to fund printing and so on as well. So. Yeah. But yeah, at but, least it but, could be copied easily. So. Yeah. At least much faster than uh, before be because before, as far as I know, like clerks would like write by hand the whole book and they it would take a couple i don't know how long but i guess a year or something to copy one one copy of the bible or something yeah and now you could print it uh, like much faster obviously yeah but i would say still it, it's good uh, the um, it's good for everyone i in in my opinion that we there oh there, yeah with the invention itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because because now you could uh, quickly distribute a lot of information to many, many pe more people than before. Yeah. Which is obviously some kind of relation to internet today, but let's not go into that too much. But it, pretty early on, there was a lot of discussion about this thing with pirates and it was actually termed pirate the pirate publisher and so some people started to engage in adding some kind of restrictions to the uh, corporate uh, way uh, the book printing so this guy victor hugo from from france he instigated the burn convention convention as some kind of reaction and the Berne Convention is something we're still using today. So in 1886, there was this convention. Uh, I believe it was in Paris, no, perhaps Bern. And uh, basically the agreements made there are still valid today, which is kind of interesting. And this change name to burpee <laughs> it's probably not called burpee but i wanted to say burpee <laughs> yeah, which turned into wipo and then 74 wipo all of a sudden was a part of un it's kind so of do you know uh, that convention was it between uh, what what kind of people were there like uh, politicians or or who was it i don't know i don't know interesting because someone, it, it, it's like, if it's the first uh, copyright uh, thing, copyright comes from, from the law, I guess. I guess you will go into that later. But how did yeah. it start then? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we had the statute of Anne before, earlier on in, in, in England or United Kingdom. But I, I figure it was like some kind of lawyers doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the one of these things that it states is that a, a work. If if I'm I'm living in Sweden. If if I do a work here in the Swedish uh, in Sweden, it's also protected in Germany under German laws, up to the protection level I have in Sweden. So already we're seeing that copyright law is, is getting like kind of tricky, but the convention says that there is a strong minimal protection and 
the last but one point here is actually one of my favorite points. It's it, copyright is automatic. It's no registration. It's no fees. And the last point here is something we can debate, but perhaps not today. I'm just saying Disney. Excuse me? I'm just saying Disney, and then I think we've debated it can be made longer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's kind of things you discuss about Disney. But So let's look at well, one, kind of one question. Definition. This is from Wikipedia. So it says copyright is the exclusive right given to the creator of creative work to reproduce the work usually for a limited time. So I would say if we focus on exclusive rights to the creator, that's basically copyright. So whenever I write something, I'm getting exclusive rights. This is a dense uh, definition. What does so, the cre creative work mean here in this context then? Is there a definition of creative work? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, the uh, the uh, I, I'm I'm not sure the what would be a strict definition here, but I would say if, as soon as you write something that has some kind of I tend to use the word creativity again here, which is kind of awkward. But yeah. as soon as you write something that someone hasn't written before in in such a combination that it's like unique, then it I would say it's copyrighted. Hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be good. <laughs> I can yeah. argue for that some of the music today is not good, but that's me being. <laughs> oh, no, no, obviously, yeah. But I guess there is a lot of like dispute on about where the border is between creative work and like is metadata just because I wrote it down creative? Most probably not. No, yeah, this is, is an API a creative work or is it the, the implementation? Mm. Oh, it sounds like a Google would have an opinion on that. <laughs> yeah. And maybe so, Oracle as well. So it, just as a reminder here, you don't it's given to the creator. I, I don't have to register, I don't have to pay any fees. So that's one of the coolest things I think with copyright. And who can use my material? Also, so remember that the creator is given exclusive rights. So basically, whatever I write, you can't use. But and use in what way? I mean, I can read it and I cannot read it? Or what? what you what can read it, but right? you cannot copy it. You cannot um, change read. it. Okay. But well, you don't really have the right to read it either, unless Henrik gives you the right to read it. Yeah, that's true. It, I right? haven't heard of a case where somebody is sued for copyright law uh, because of reading something. Well, reading no, Swiss code that was not the, released that has yeah, probably. If you, don't, mm. if you don't buy the book, but still read it. <laughs> But then I guess we get into intent. So if you if you on purpose read something you're not supposed to read, you 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 probably infringe something, but probably not the copyright. But it's interesting. If if I read a book that is not yet published, it probably means that somebody has copied it, and I, I would say that that's a more likely case to sue me for for the actual mm. copy. Yeah. Yeah. Or you somehow got your hands on a, uh, on the original without the author willing to give it to you, and then it was uh, yeah stolen basically. Yeah. So in short, how do we know if and to who a work is copyright? The this is a classic. We we sometimes see it copyrighted this and that. Or we see the. C with uh, parentheses around it, or the copyright sign here. This is I mean, an old Unicode ASCII. Excuse me. It's Unicode or ASCII. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the ASCII number here, but but it's it's it, you don't need to write this. But I would say it makes things a lot easier if you you say that this work is copyrighted to me, and to make sure that we are like following the copyright laws that so we are attributing the we are a 
allowed to use these pictures in this presentation and we are uh, also using a license which is something we will discuss later on but we are following the copyright law here so we are attributing the uh, creators of these words so i think it's time to end <laughs>